Hi everyone, Bob Thomason here. I want to spend a few moments and show you something that was a challenge for me in setting up an ADSB receiver at the local airport. I used Rasby, a Raspberry Pi unit to do this, but I used FlightAware's PiAware software, uh, their version of Rasby and Linux. I used that download to configure this, which makes everything real nice, but I had a need to set up a static IP and found it a little bit challenging. So this is what I wanted to go through with you to show you exactly how to do this. And then you'll, yeah, this will save you some aggravation, hopefully. So let's go over to a unit. I'm remoted into a PC at the airport and then we'll log into the Raspberry Pi. Let's go over there. All right, now we are remoted into a PC there and I'm gonna set up uh, PuTTY, I can use PuTTY. I've got another program here called Anzio Lite that I like particularly. Does a very good job on SSH. You have to purchase that. PuTTY is uh, free. So let's just go over and I'll type in the address 192.168.1.28. I know the address of the unit and I'm going to remote in. Try to make this window a little bit larger. There we go. All right, now I am logged in or I'm logging in. And one thing I need to do is that all this configuration takes place in a file in the boot directory. So I'm going to change CP. I'm going to copy that to pi are-config dot. I'm going to just use the word save. You can use any extension you want right there. Now, if I do an ls, I've got pyware-config.save in there. This is in case I mess something up. And I've been in this line of business for a long time and I always try to figure some way to get back to where I started. And that's the reason I copied this over. So next we're going to do sudo if I can spell it right pi then by all means use that but for this purpose I'm going to use nano. VI is very good if you understand VI, but VI is not very intuitive. You know, have to have to know the, the keyboard strokes to do the different things. Nano is not that way. All right, now get down here to this network section. Let me scroll back up. Network configuration, which is near the top of this file, and you'll see that the wired network shows uh, yes, not wired network space, yes. And then below that, you're going to add the lines in here, wired dash type equal, um, space static, and then the wired sp dash address space, and then the IP that you want, that you want to sign here. And this is saying that you're not using DHCP. And You'd, you have to set up the net mask, the broadcast address, and the gateway, and the uh, wired name service. Now, you can use the router. Uh, in this case, I just use the router as the name server, or you can use Google's name servers, which would be, if I were going to use Google, I'd use... 8.8.8.8 correct and then I would take out this uh, here or you can use any other name servers that you might be familiar with or want to use in there you use a, a space between the two but in this case I'm going to go back and stay with the 192 
So I'm going to use 192.168.1.1. Now, I've got that set up. Let me step down here just past this. You'll see the wired network, wireless dash network is showing yes. You can change that to a no, but the Raspberry Pi unit is going to automatically use the wired network if you have a wire plugged in. And in my case, I have a wire plugged in. If I were going to set up a static IP on the wireless network, then I would put all the information in this paragraph right here and add additional information on down below here. So let's see here. All right. So next to save this information, I'm going to use control X, which it shows down the screen. And if I want to save this file, press Y, and then press enter and then I can do sudo okay once the system reboots which doesn't take but just a few minutes then I can log back in to this using the new address if I had assigned a new address in this case I did not but I can log in with that address that I've assigned and log back in here. One, two. Okay. And now I'm back in my Raspberry Pi unit. So this is just a way to show you how to minimize aggravation, I guess you would, in working with a Raspberry Pi unit that's running the Flight or the Pi Aware put out by Flight Aware. So this, I hope this video has been helpful. And if it has, please hit the subscribe button below and we'll chat later.